Mr Pippin, you coming to investigate what's happening? Oh, that's nice. Good morning and welcome to the Green Lambkin podcast. My name is Suzanne. Just thought I'd introduce myself to those of you who might not have been here before. Um, welcome and welcome back to all of you who are returning viewers. It's lovely to see you all. This is the first podcast. Oh, hello, Mr Pippin. <laughs> Pippin is my co-host today. He's coming to have a look. What on earth, <laughs> what on earth is happening? Mr Pippin, what are you doing? He says, I don't know what all this is about, Mum, but it's very interesting. Do not knock the lamp over. How very professional as always. Mm. Yes, this is the first podcast of 2024. I'm very excited to be here. And I'm going to share with you some finished objects, some works in progress. Uh, oi! Pippin says, I want to share them. And I say, no. Some works in progress, uh, some finished objects, some work in, works in progress, uh, some incoming goodies and some shop news. So uh, I'm, I've got a nice hot cup of fruit tea here and it's a German one. My mum-in-law gave me these teas for Christmas. A friend had given them to her, but she's not really a fruit or herbal tea drinker, but she knows I am and I must admit these are some of the nicest fruit teas I've had in many years. So the brand is um, Mesmer. Uh, gosh, it says to brew for eight minutes. No, I don't. I think that'd be too strong. Uh, and uh, excuse my German. I did do German GCSE and I got a B, which is not bad, but it's been a long while since I took that. Um, and I have not kept my German up, but it's Himmelsauber. Winter Punch Mandel. So I think that's Winter Punch with Mandarin. Something like that. Anyway, I haven't Googled it. I'm just making guessing. So I'm probably completely wrong. But it's absolutely lovely. It's very parky here today. Um, it's two degrees currently. And, and I'm actually really glad because it's been so mild over the Christmas break. Um, and loads and loads of kids have got this horrible cough bug. And we need a little cold snap to kill off a few of the germs so let's talk about some fo's shall we uh i haven't got many i've got this one which if you were watching uh vlogmas you will have seen i finished these these are the um west yorkshire spinners signature four ply 2023 christmas colorway which was nutcracker and I don't know if you can tell this or not, but it is sparkly. I'm working with a new setup. I bought a ring light over Christmas and I've got that on at a much lower setting than I did before. So I'm hoping that that's going to help with the colour interpretation. And then the heel and the toe of this sock I've done also with West Yorkshire Spinners 4 ply. And I think this is called Evergreen. It's one of their newer... Um, solid colourways. It's a two by two rib with, um, and it's my typical vanilla recipe, which is 64 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter um, chow goo red lace circular needle. And then I put a forethought heel in and then a normal double decrease toe. And that suits my foot shape very well. I make a nice long leg because I usually wear ankle boots in winter and I like a little bit of my sock to peek over the top, just for a bit of added interest in the outfit department. So I haven't worn these yet. I shall put them in my box, Christmas box of socks and save them for next December. Uh, the only other finished object I've got to show you is these that I'm wearing because it's quite chilly. So these are, <clears throat> excuse me, a finished pair of thorny briar mitts. Let me just show you one at a time. So I wore them today for the first time. And this is the new pattern that I've just released and we are doing a knit along for it at the moment. So I'll just very briefly mention that now and then I'll come back to it again later on in the podcast. But the Thorny Briar mitts have just been released. They're available on, in my Ravelry shop and also on my um, 
online shop, which is greenlambkinyarn.com, I think. <laughs> Still getting used to that. But if you Google Green Lamb Kin Yarn, it will come up. <clears throat> so, uh, yes, that's available in both those places. Um, and this is knitted in Green Lamb Kin Yarn DK uh, in the Colourway Dancing Lights. But I've got that to show you when we talk about shop news. So I'll just talk briefly about it. It's got... Um, it's knitted in DK, as I said, and it's on a 3.25 millimeter needle. It's got a forethought thumb in it. So that's what that looks like. And then it's got this slip stitch detail, which makes a really nice sort of textured pattern up the back of the hand. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it sort of reminds me of Tangled Briars. So that's my other FO. Then I've got a half finished object, so um, let me get those out. This is my Christmas socks. They are living in an, an Ollie and Bella Christmas bag, which was a gift from her the other Christmas. And the pattern I'm using for this is the Find the Joy socks, bag, which was a gift from her the other Christmas. And the pattern I'm using for this is the Find the Joy Socks by Kay Litton of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. Um, and I am absolutely adoring this pattern. I will definitely be knitting it again. This is using the same kind of slip stitches as, as I used in my um, mitten pattern, but just in a different configuration. Let me get this on the sock blocker. So this is the first of my I've got an even longer leg on this one because I'm just enjoying this pattern so much. So I've tipped the top of the cuff. I just cast on with this neon yellow yarn, which was in my um, advent swap from Rachel of So Ray Me, that little ball of yarn. And it was perfect to go with this sock yarn. I'm not sure if you'll be able to pick that this up or not, but there are neon pops of yellow. So that was the main, uh, the, the, the little bit of tipping on the top. The main colour is this. It's living in my little yarn tub from Joe of Pickle Lily, which I absolutely love. And I want one of these for every season of the year. It's getting a bit squishy look. This is the yarn for the main colour. If you watch my Vlogmas, you'll have seen me winding this all up ready for Christmas Eve. And the yarn is from Smugly Stars and it's called Coming home for Christmas. And that's, that's the label. Hope you can read that okay. And then the contrast colour is West Yorkshire Spinner's Signature 4 Ply again. I absolutely love using this yarn for my heels and toes because I, I'm quite hard on my socks. And um, that's a very sturdy and hard wearing yarn. It has some BFL, Blue Face Leicester in it, and that's a really hard wearing yarn. So it works really well for me. So it's a, I've used the pattern from K for the sock texture, for the texture of the main body of the sock. I don't know how well it's picking up the pattern design there. You can see the difference in the heel, uh, in the sole and the top of the foot there. Do they call that part the instep? I'm not sure. Anyway, it's absolutely beautiful, this pattern. I really love it. But I did use my forethought heel and toe just because I know what fits me well and what works. So I just use other people's patterns for the texture or the detail and then insert my own heel and toe in because I know that works well for me. So progress on this halted whilst I knitted these. Oh, I should say, by the way, the, the cowl for these is in two places. You can you can join in with it both on Instagram and on Ravelry. So if you're go, doing it on Instagram, share your pictures on Instagram using the hashtag um, Thorny Briar Mitts Cal. So that's I'll put it down here if I remember to. Hopefully I will. Uh, Thorny Briar Mitts and I double T S and then K A L all one word. Um, and that will enter you. It doesn't matter how many times you share images of it, each share on that um, hashtag will um, count as a, an entry. 
and then I'm going to also, I haven't done it yet, but today I will go into Ravelry and I will, if you go to me and uh, find my, oh God, my group on Ravelry, um, I will set up a thread in there um, for sharing your chatter and your finished pro progress. And, and every entry on there will make you eligible to win a prize as well. I don't know what the prize is going to be yet, whether it'll be a skein of DK so you can knit more mittens or maybe so you can knit a hat to go with your mittens or whether to do a sock set, I don't know. Tell me what you like. You can leave a comment below or you can put it in the um, Ravelry group thread. These are the kinds of things that any organised person would do prior to starting the podcast, but I'm not an organised person. Anyway, so I stopped for a little while whilst I was knitting these mitts, but I'm back on with these again today. Um, I'm really wanting to get these finished now because I've got a new cast on for socks planned and I'm looking forward to doing that. Even though I'm still really enjoying the, these, um, the pleasure of knitting these has not been lost now that I'm onto the second sock. It's still as enjoyable as ever, which is always a sign of a good pattern, I think when you're as happy knitting the second sock as you are, as you were knitting the first one. I tend not to get second sock syndrome too much, touch wood. Um, but should that ever happen, I think what I would do is start both socks at the same time, either knit them two at a time, which I have done before, or maybe knit them concurrently. So do a cuff, do a cuff, do a leg, do a leg, do a heel. You know what I mean, don't you? Anyway, I shall share when I've finished those. I've got a, a lovely Robin pin on there, which Cherie sent me, I believe. And I've also, I don't know whether you're going to be able to see this or not, but I've got a bag charm on here, which is the um, Peppermint Swirl bag charm that's in my shop. And I do love that very much. It goes really well with this bag because it's all sort of frosty pink colours. Okay, right, moving on to stitching now. I've got a cross stitch project on the go. And I'm getting on really well with it, actually. Um, in last year's, so 2022's Vlogmas, I shared these because um, they were advent gifts from my friends Paula and Rachel. They are the Country Cottage Needleworks um, Nutcracker series and they bought me all the charts throughout um, advent last year. Can you see that with it? It's a bit glary, isn't it, in the plastic? Let me take it out. Can you see that okay? So I've started with the central one. So these are, um, you can, they're designed so that you can compile them all onto one big piece of Ada. But I'm not doing that. I'm stitching them as individual pieces. And I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with them all when they're finished. But I'm probably going to just do one per Christmas season until it's all finished. So I'll be stitching for a good many years. It's in um, one of those Nerge embroidery hoops. Let me take it out because you can't really see the detail. I've got a lovely gingerbread house um, needle minder, which I bought from um, Chapel View Crafts a couple of years ago now. And I'm absolutely loving using that. Um, and this is just done on, I think it's Vigart Ada. There you go. You can't see very clearly, but there are all um, snowflakes down here. And then I've done the snowy land and Clara and the Nutcracker uh, and the Christmas tree. So I've got the other Christmas tree to do. And then there's a border that goes along the top here, like um, a banner, I suppose. And after that, it's done. And I have got a very exciting um, new start planned for 2024. So um, it's urging me on to get this finished and then I can make a start on my new project. I'm going to put the hoop back on because I can see where it where, went and it'll get on my nerves if I have to try and do that when I'm not at the table. Oh, that's gone wonky. There we go. I'll just tighten that up. And I'll pop my um, needle minder back in there. I might need to tighten that a bit more, but at least it's in the right place. I am mostly using classic Colourworks threads for this. 
These were all provided for me as well. And they do use a mixture of DMC and classic colour works. I think these are the colours for the whole series. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's ten different classic colourways threads. Let's show you one. And then there's one, two, three, four different DMC colours and I think that's what the pattern calls for I think um, she basically they basically provided me with exactly what the pattern stated I don't think there's enough they gave me some Ada not enough to stitch all of them but that's that's fine I can um, I can add to that as I go along it's just the basic cream colourway I think so it's not going to be difficult to get my hands on I don't think so that's a work in progress that's going well and I'm enjoying I do I love a big um cross stitch project you can just see there look that's the last big cross stitch that I did my um Christmas wreath I've not put I've put all the Christmas stuff away but I've not put that away yet because I want to think about how to really carefully package that it didn't fit into any of the other boxes I might have to buy a box just for keeping my Christmas cross stitching Uh, the last whip, oh my word, that is so heavy. I can't show you it all in its entirety because it is now far too big. Whoopsie daisy, that nearly went in my tea. But just to give you an idea, I'll unfold it a little bit. This is it in half. Can you see? It's my Christmas EPP, um, that's English paper piecing, um, quilt top. I've added quite a lot into this over the Christmas period and I will continue working on this probably until the end of February, beginning of March time. Then I'm going to go back to another EPP project that I've, I've got on the go and I'm hoping to get that done by about September ready to get my autumn one out. Um, but my friend Davina sent me quite a few Christmassy fabrics over, they were in, we did a fabric advent swap and they uh, there were quite a few Christmassy ones in there. So I've been having lots of fun adding those in and mixing them up with some others that, um, mixing them up with the other ones that I'd already got. So that's that, I'm using, um, I think the one and a half inch hexes because you measure it's the length of one edge of the hexagon rather than the length across it the width across it I should say um I've got yarn fluff in my tea never mind I'm going to finish it before it gets too cold that's all my whips I have got a few of them oh no it's not I've got a crochet whip oh I knew I'd forget something bear with and I'll be back in a minute Here we go. Living in rather large, rather a large project bag, which was made by Laura, my sister. This is, oh, where's the end of that yarn? Hang on, bear with. Ah, there it is. This is a Christmas wrap, an advent wrap, I should say, by, I'm just gonna take these out for a second because I want them in a separate place. Um, Dragon Hill Studio and it's a 2023 advent wrap. I haven't got the printed pattern in here. I'm just trying to fish out all the many minis that I have got in here. So this was my advent swap with Paula and it's absolutely gorgeous and I'm enjoying it so much. And for the first time in, well, probably ever, I didn't put pressure on myself to finish this during Advent um, because I'm just enjoying the process of it so much and I've been working on, I've been feeling the stitching quite a lot um, as well. So I'm, I'm not pressuring myself to get this done 
with any kind of time constraints. I'm just working on this as and when I want to, trying to find the correct, is that the beginning? No, this is it. So it's an extremely wild, bright, zany, gorgeous, long, scarfy, rappy thing. Now it's going to be even more glorious when it's blocked out. And it has five rows of the pattern and then you do this slip stitch row which creates these nice horizontal lines throughout it. Beautiful but very frustrating because I get into the swing of the pattern and forget to do that every five rows and end up having to pull back my work frequently. So, um, yeah, but I'm getting more into the swing of it now and oh God, I'm enjoying it so much. And every time I look at it, it just makes my mouth water because I love those colours so much. Paula knows me really well um, and she knows how much I love snuggle, snuggle bum yarns. And no, not snuggle bum, cuddle bum yarns, cuddle bums yarns. And she also knows how much I love zebra yarns. And this is ridiculous because I still haven't dyed a, a range of zebra yarn and I must do that. So, these are five gram minis. If you watch vlog, Vlogmas, you'll know all this. So, some of them are zebra and some of them are not zebra. But Cuddlebums um, specialises in doing all these micro striping rainbows, which I absolutely adore. And these are all just, let me just pick them all up and show you. I don't want to drop them in my tea. They're all just lovely, random, bright colours. And I'm just... I lost track of which order they all went in and that's absolutely fine. I am just picking them out at random or looking at the one I've just finished and thinking which one would go nicely next to it. I want lots of contrast. I could have waited and I could have put them in a fade, but I, no, I just like the chaos of it. I think I'm using a slightly bigger size crochet hook. This is the problem with not having the pattern printed out because I then can't remember the details. I am using, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not, it's a four millimetre crochet hook and this is one that I bought from Flea Bubs many years ago. It's one of my absolute favourites. It's got like a rainbow swirly. This is a, a Fimo or polymer clay handle so the lady who makes these puts the handles on and um, I can't use a crochet hook without some kind of bigger handle on it because I have arthritis in my CMC joint of my thumb and that means that my grip strength is very reduced and it causes me a lot of pain. So I uh, I always use a, a crochet hook that has some kind of more ergonomic grip on it. So now I've got that out again and had a look at it <laughs> I'm now thinking I really want to crochet on that but I really want to get those socks finished and I really want to put lots of work in on my EPP and I really want to get that cross stitch finished so that I can start my next one. <laughs> I should have fetched that but no I'll wait and I'll talk about that on the next podcast because you, you can't have too much and sometimes there's not a lot to talk about so it'd be good to spread it out a bit. So yes I think the pattern called for a, it might have called for a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook and I decided oh no I think it didn't I think it had a it had a larger hook Maybe it was a 4.5 or a 5. I can't remember. One or the other, I think it was bigger and I decided it would be too gappy with my crochet tension. So I'm just using a 4 mil hook. Uh, and I've got this lovely Robin um, key ring on the handle and also a lovely Robin, sparkly Robin pin. And they were both part of the advent from Paula as well. Uh, and then she also put these three 20 gram minis in. I think it was three or maybe it was only two of them. And I was going to keep those and use them for the um, edging. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Maybe fringing, I'm not sure. Uh, and then on Christmas morning, I opened these three. She put these three under the tree. So it's obviously, and she knows how much I love neons. And I'm now looking at these and thinking, oh, these could be a project in their own right. Imagine those 
knitted with like a solid black or like a really dark purpley navy blue into a project. Mm. So now I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with those. But so that's a bit of we're, we're working our way into um, acquisition, stash acquisitions. Now, a lot of this is gifts and I'm not going to show everything. Although what I will say is that my knitty friends and crafty friends are so blooming generous. It's incredible. I can't tell you how much I appreciate everything. So if you did send me anything and I don't show it, I just want you to know it's not because I love it less. I love it all. I just don't want to, A, be boring and B, seem like avaricious and greedy. But I'm just going to give you a little snapshot. So I'm assuming that these also these were from Paula and also I'm guessing came from Cuddlebum's Yarn. And then my other gift from Paula was this. Now, if you've been with me a while, you'll know that every Christmas day she gives me a skein of sock yarn in a Christmas colourway. And then I save that all year and then knit it as my Christmas Eve cast on the following year. And I am a bit of an obsessive when it comes to Snuggly Stars yarn. I've got quite a bit of her yarn, lovely Gemma. If you don't follow her on Instagram and things, you really should because her dyeing and her knitting are absolutely delicious and she's very inspirational. So this is her Christmas colourway from 2023 and it's called Santa Baby. And it's on the fabulous sock base, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Uh, and we bought, she actually bought this when I was with her um, because Gemma was vending at the Bakewell wool gathering and Paula and I went for the day out. She bought me this and I also bought some gorgeous Halloween yarn from um, Gemma and that's on a different base. I can't quite remember what the whether it's Polworth or Corridale, something like that, a different sock base. And I'm really looking forward to casting that on this year. So there's lots of blues, there's greens hiding away in there. Then there's this lovely pinky, orangey red. So that's going to be my Christmas cast on, my Christmas Eve cast on for next year. Um, and I'm really excited about that. And then Paula also, just before Christmas gave me this and told me to unwrap it immediately. And she knows, this is actually in the shawl as well, she knows how much I love um, bright neon colours and zebra yarn. And she bought me this. And this is another skein of Cuddlebum's yarn. I don't know if you can see the thing properly there. Cuddlebum's. And it's on the zebra base, which is superwash 80-20, superwash merino and nylon and zebra just means that it's got these lovely black barber polling sections in it the colorway is midnight rainbow and it's like she can read minds or something because whilst i was crocheting with this little i had a little five gram mini in this same colorway and i was like oh my god i love this i wonder if she does it in full skeins and then like on the 23rd Paula gave me this and said open it immediately and there was a Christmas mug from Marks and Spencers and then this it's got two progress keepers with it a Santa hat and also a little white gummy bear and it came in a little sack uh, with some sweeties in as well some I think there was a candy cane and there were some chocolate coins and things in there as well and I went on Cuddlebum's um, Instagram and I saw that she had been doing these as like a little blind bag kind of gift set so that was amazing uh right what should i show you next jewels from so sweet violet bless her heart she sent me this gorgeous little notions pouch which has got patchwork and it's got this i think this is i think this is bell and boo fabric and it's absolutely adorable bits of liberty and it's really pretty there was some chocolate in this which obviously is no more uh, that's so sweet, Violet. Look, that's stamped inside. And then also in here, in this lovely little waxed paper parcel, are these... I've never seen these before, and it's so sweet. They are fabric stamps. I'm not going to show you them at all. I'll just show you a couple. So these are felt and fabric, I think. And they're lovely little motifs. And on the back, 
Can you hear them crinkling? They've got like a backing paper. You pull that off and then iron these onto whatever you want to attach them to. So it could be a project bag, it could be a shopping bag, it could be a jacket or a garment. And there are loads of really sweet folk arty designs. And you, if you know me at all, you know I absolutely love folk arty things. And it came with a set of instructions in the bag on how you use them. And I'm just so excited to find something special to put these on. So that's absolutely gorgeous. We're getting. I got this gorgeous needle cozy. That was from my lovely friend Sharon, who, who is she who crafts and plans on Instagram. And she also has or is going to be setting up um, an Etsy shop called the Rydale Rose or the Rosebud of Rydale, I think it's going to be called. But when that's open properly, I will share it with you. And she, I'm pretty sure, I hope I'm getting all this right because the gifts all got a bit muddled up under the tree and sometimes I um, wasn't 100% sure who everything was from, which is a bit rubbish, but yeah, if it didn't have my name on it and who it was from, because Ivy was, and Cosmo were just doling them out and I got a bit, a bit confused by everything. I don't know what's in this. Oh, the, I think these are progress keepers. Yes, they are. And I'm pretty sure these are from Jeanette of Clasty, Clasty, Crafty Clegg's Creations. This is a gingerbread man, progress keeper, and she's a progress keeper, isn't it? Yes, and some really lovely textured stitch markers, which are beautiful. I really like those. Um, I've just found a bit more Christmas fabric, which Davina sent me. This is a full fat quarter. So that's going to be going, look at that, it's so beautiful. I bet this is Elmhurst fabric. I'm not going to open it like that because it's folded funny. But it's just got all these gorgeous little girls and bunnies and toadstools. Beautiful. So that needs to go in the old Christmas quilt box. Uh, this was part of my Christmas Day gift from um, Rachel of So Ray Me. This absolutely gorgeous, like a bunny ears bag. And it's got just the most lovely fabrics. And this had lovely presents inside of it. So that's gorgeous. And she also sent me these fantabulous minis, which I'm wanting to make some mitts out of. And I might knit them with a strand of another four ply or some floof to make them a bit thicker. And these are Vicky Brown Designs yarns and they're really beautiful. They're like, um, semi-solids. You can see really well in this yellow one actually, what nice colours they are. Um, and I believe this was from Jeanette. She crocheted me this Robin. How adorable. Isn't he lovely? Everyone knows how much I love a Robin. And then the last thing I shall show you for now is this kit which was from my mum-in-law and I will admit that I did ask for it. I sent her the link but it's just a little embroidery holly hoop it's called from So Made by Jess. And I wanted it because I want to practice my um, satin stitch technique. I'm not very good at it, but next advent, I want to do a project which has satin stitch as one of the main um, features. So I thought I need to get some practice in. So I'll, um, find a kit and then maybe I can do some free hand stuff, you know, design some stuff myself. I'm going to put those little minis in that bag. Look how sweet it is when it's all done up. And she put the presents inside that, so that was under the tree. I was so excited looking at it. She also made me this incredible doll, which I'll try and remember to take a bit of footage of. I think she's meant to be a Christmas dolly, but she's too beautiful just to keep have out at Christmas. So I'm keeping her out 
all year round. She's going to sit in my corner with a lovely little teddy called Prue, who was from um, Paula of um, the Stitch by Mrs. D podcast. And they can hang out in the corner together. Right. Shop news. I'm warming up now. Might have to take my mitts off for a bit, I think. So, shop news. <laughs> the first and most exciting thing, no, I don't think it's the most exciting thing, it's just an exciting thing, is that the Thorny Briar Mitts pattern, which looks like this, is now available. I've just knitted this pair, and I've knitted a couple of other pairs, some as gifts, um, and some as samples. And I've got this much left, so that's a tiny little bit, because I made a mistake of my own pattern. I just weighed this and that's 48 grams. I wonder if that might be actually take it up to 50, which would mean that you could truly get two pairs of mitts out of 100 gram skein. But I'm probably gonna use this to make another pair. I could make a pair for someone with smaller hands or I could make another pair of adult ones and I could use a contrast DK for maybe the cuff, on the hand and at the top and on the thumb. Um, but I think that's really good value. But I suppose depending on your tension, you might, you know, you might use more or less. It's a bit squeaky, you know, not much, but potentially you could get two out. Especially if you have a little bit of a, you know, a 20 gram mini skein in DK would definitely be enough to put just a few rows at the top and bottom in a contrast color. And that would work really nicely. So to go with that in the shop, I've also got a range of DK yarns. And these are all new colourways but one. So I'll show you the one that isn't a new colourway first. Now these are all available in uh, DK, Classic DK and um, Sparkle DK. And they are exactly the same composition as my Classic Sock and Sparkle Sock. So... The classic is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and the sparkle sock is a 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina. So this is an older colorway that I created a couple of years ago. This is it in a shawl. The colorway is Fairy Forest. Uh, I dyed this on um, sport weight yarn for this shawl. Um, and it's got lots of green, lots of speckles. So let me show you here. Can you see the speckles? So that's it on the sparkle. And then that's it on the DK. Ooh, good speckles there. So that's Fairy Forest. And then all the rest are completely new colourways. So this one is Frosty Sunset. And that's a pale lilac and cream background with lots of pinks, purples, glowing oranges. So there we go on the classic. That's Frosty Sunset. We've got Apple and Blackberry. So this is a very light greeny colour. It might be showing up a bit yellow there. And then we've got magenta and plum. And that's all sort of very blended in together. That's apple and blackberry. I think that works really well on the sparkle. If you can see the sparkle, I'm not sure. Next one up is Winter Warmer. And this is just a nice, it's not speckly, it's sort of splodgy. We'll say splodgy. It's got really nice sort of primary colours, teal, red, dark plummy purple and a bright orange. And then it's got dark brown speckles over the top of that, if you can see that. And that works really well on the classic as well. I really like how the colours show up on this classic DK. Then we've got Dancing Lights, which is the one that, I've knitted these ones in. There you go, just to give you an idea of how it knits up. So that's the pattern side. 
that's the stocking the stitch side, excuse me. And there it is on both bases. The sparkle. And that's bright neons overlaid with a really midnight bluey black colour. That's the classic. And the last one is more a, a more delicate colourway, and this is called Twilight Huga. That's a very pale muted pink with speckles of reds, teals, greens, chestnutty browns. for a more subtle effect. There we go. And they're all in the Green Lambkin yarn shop now. For your mitten knitting, winter hat, cowl knitting, anything warm and snuggly, basically. Also in the shop are two new clubs that I'm really excited about. So I'll just tell you briefly about these. I haven't got anything to show you because with them being clubs, they are secret. But we've got the Moons of the Year sock clubs. So both of these clubs are running from January to December every month. They are all subscribable. So what that means is you can subscribe to the club and every month you will get an email reminding you to pay. That doesn't mean that any money will be taken directly out of your account. It's not a direct debit. It's just that you get a, ma a reminder to say, please pay the invoice and then that's it. So it just takes out the having to look in my shop for it every month. So that's what's happening with these two clubs. And that will also happen with the... Um, Advent Club when it starts in March. That doesn't mean to say that's the only option. You can choose to do it like as a one-off and that will be available every month as well. So, yes, the first one is the Moons of the Year Sock Club. So every month there is a full moon and every full month in the new year has um, a name. And it's an, I think this comes from Native American law um as far as i can recall uh, so you will have heard of some of them like the blood moon hunter's moon harvest moon um and there are also some really interesting ones like worm moon so each month you're going to get a 100 gram skein of sock yarn and a 20 gram contrasting mini to go with it and you can choose from the classic sock base and or the sparkle sock base and each different month will be dyed, will it be a colourway inspired by whatever the moon of the month is. You'll also get a matching progress keeper which goes in with the theme and an information card explaining about the moon of the month and what in has inspired the colourway. So that's the first one and you get, as I say you get to choose which, whether you want sparkle or classic sock. So that's the first one. And then the other one, which I've been wanting to do for probably two or three years, uh, but have never managed to actually be able to do until I started doing Green Lambkin full time, is a, a blanket club, uh, which I must remember to tell you about a knit along as well in a minute. Uh, but yes, it's called Secret Treasure Box Blanket Club. This again is a monthly club running from January to December. Each month you will get four 20 gram DK skeins and you can choose from classic DK and sparkle DK. The theme is that there is no theme. The, the idea is that it's a secret treasure box and each month you will get totally random, beautiful jewels of, of mini, mini skeins so there's going to be a mixture of brights neons dual tone colors pastels darks a real cacophony of color for want of a better word and that's um and and, and that's because although i love a theme sometimes i find that can be a little bit restrictive and actually sometimes it's really exciting and enjoyable 
to just dye yarn with wild abandon and not have a particular plan in mind. Just look at the colours and see what speaks to me. So they will all come together, um, but there won't, there won't be a particular like, this is the theme and it's quite restrictive. So um, that seems to be really popular so far. Lots of people have shown interest in that and have ordered that already. If you're one of those people, thank you so much. Same for the Sock Club and same for the Thorny Briar mix pattern and the DK yarn. Um, and then, yes, um, Advent, Advent Mini Club will be back in March. That runs from March to October, so it's an eight-month club. You can get three mini skeins per month for that but I'll talk about that in more detail and before I forget I must tell you that Cherie from Ollie and Bella and Ali from the Little Drops of Wonderful and This Little Wonderful Life are running a cosy blanket along um, throughout January and February. Uh, I cannot remember what the hashtag is for that but I'm sure they've both got Ravelry threads in their groups so if you're fancying a bit of a of blanket camaraderie and making that would be a really good place to look um and yeah that's all i've got to say about that really i think it's lovely a lovely idea to start something really cozy and comforting like that in january i'm definitely going to be joining in because i'm going to be making my own blanket with my um with my blanket club minis so I haven't decided which design I'm going to use yet. I haven't decided whether to knit it or crochet it. But one thing I am considering doing is making a podcast dedicated to talking about pattern ideas for the Blanket Club. So would that be something you'd be interested in? And if so, um, just leave me a little note below or send me a message on Instagram or email me and just uh, let me know if you'd like me to do something like that because... I mean, I certainly find that helpful. Um, I've seen some absolutely gorgeous blanket patterns out there recently, and I really can't decide which one I fancy most. I think I've blathered on it here. I'm nearly 50 minutes in, so I think I'm going to shut up um, <laughs> and let you go and do something else. I've still not finished my tea, and it is now very cold. So I think I'm going to go and make myself a mid-morning coffee I'm going to get this uploaded and then I'm going to work on some of these projects. It's the kids' first day back at school today. I've got, I've just seen that um, Gaynor from Tales from Cuckoo Land has uploaded her Christmas Day vlog from Vlogmas. And also Ali has got her podcast out and she's talking about the blanket along in that. So I'm going to watch those. And then I've also not watched Call the Midwife yet or um, the first episode of the new series of um, all creatures great and small so they're going to be lined up for my viewing pleasure later on today and tonight I think let me know if you're watching anything really good on telly at the moment I don't like thrillers and dark stuff I find that there's enough misery in real life <laughs> and when I want go to watch something I want escapism I like I really like um historical stuff um i'm just trying to think of other things i've watched that i really enjoyed i love bridgerton uh i love things like pride and prejudice and yeah i like cozy stuff so things like call the midwife and all creatures great and small are right up my street i love that cozy feel good kind of vibe and i listen to a lot of historical fiction as well really into stuff about the world war second world war and the first world war at the moment i'm not sure why i never used to be interested in that stuff but it's just gripped me anyway i really must shut up i'm just blathering now thank you very much for joining me i do have a mailing list which you can um join up to um i'll leave the link below if you would like to be kept up to date with things like clubs um, and if you're thinking of joining the club and you don't want to do the monthly subscription it's a good idea to join the mailing list because we will send an email out every month um, that's the royal we um i mean johnny because he helps me with my mailing list bless him so he'll send out an, an email at the end of the um, sign up 
Oh, that's an important thing. I should tell you that. The 24th of January is the cut-off date for ordering the Sock Club and the Blanket Club this month. After that, it'll come out of the shop for the month because I obviously need to know what number I need to die. So we will send an email a few days, probably around the 20th, 21st, saying, woo, 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 if you want to join in, order quickly because it's going to be ending soon. So that's a really good reason to sign up to the um, mailing list. And I'll put the link, as I said, below, just for those little reminders. And also tidbits of when new videos come up and anything else interesting that I might be about to share. Hopefully some tutorials this year as well. Right, please shut up, Suzanne. You are really banging on now. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure to spend some time with you and chat about all things crafty. And I'll be back again very soon with progress on my projects and other exciting things. Ta-ta for now. As promised, here is the beautiful little girl that Rachel made for me. She's got the sweetest little dress and a lovely little headscarf and a tufty little bit of hair. I've got to name her yet. I haven't decided what she's going to be called, but it will be something sweet. Oh, and here is a pot of organic calendula salve that was made for me by Jules also from So Sweet Violet. And I've had a breakout of eczema on the back of my hand from hand washing, um, too much soap. And I've been using that on it and it's cleared it up. It's amazing. And here's Prue, who was from Paula. Paula sent her to me um, not long after we lost my dad in 2021. And she's been there ever since. And she's keeping me company now. She keeps me company in my knitting nook every time I sit here. And now Prue and this little girl can be best friends. What shall I call her? Something sweet. I'll have a think about it and try to remember to tell you next time. Ta-ta!